Lent is a time of reflection and repentance, of sacrifice and self-examination, which includes turning our eyes to the cross. May this season bring you a reconnection to the journey that Jesus took to the cross and the joy that comes after Easter morning. As we enter into our words of faith from Psalm 121 this night, let us just close our eyes for a moment to gently breathe in and to breathe out and to make room for the Holy Spirit to enter in. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. At this time, the ushers will receive the Lord's offering.
And let us pray. Most of all, God, we turn to your son's cross. It convicts us in remembering our sin and brings us comfort remembering our forgiveness. Encourage us to share with the world our baptismal callings and our spiritual gifts so that others may know your love, your mercy, your grace, and your forgiveness. Grant us time and space to hear your voice as we prepare our hearts for the resurrection of your Son. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. This can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter.
Let us pray. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. I invite you to rise and body your spirit. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. And please welcome Simon of Cyrene. Well, there it is, 
the cross. It really doesn't look like much, does it? Two pieces of wood, one across the other. But like any other symbol, it's not what it is that's important. It's what it makes you think of. I'll tell you what it makes me think of, for my name is Simon, from the city of Cyrene, which is in Africa, and I am a Jew. Like all other Jews who take their religion seriously, I always go to Jerusalem for the Passover, even though it's quite a trip from Cyrene. I was there this year, too. In fact, I had just arrived at the outskirts of the city when I was barred from going any farther by a procession of some sort coming down the narrow street toward me. I saw the soldiers and I got out of the way, well over to the side. You do not pick a fight with a Roman soldier, that is, if you're smart. When they got a little closer, I was sickened to see that it was a group of three men carrying their own crosses. They were obviously on their way to, to their own execution and guarded by a Roman squad. I wanted nothing so much as to get out of there, but the crowd was so thick I couldn't move. Then to make everything worse, one of the three men stumbled and fell right in front of me. I could see his back, and it was a mass of bleeding welts. He had been severely beaten, and it was no wonder that he couldn't get up. One of the soldiers yelled at him and kicked him, but the centurion stopped him and began looking over in my direction. It was my misfortune to be the biggest man in the crowd. He called out, and I went, not willingly, but because he had a sword and the power of Rome on his side. Give us a hand with this cross, fellow, he said. In my head, it sounded more like an order. Pick up that cross. They lifted the cross up off the fallen man and laid it on my shoulders. Then they yanked him to his feet. I felt the weight of that cross on my shoulders, and I knew immediately that I wanted no part of helping them with their dirty work. But suddenly the man who had fallen turned his head and looked straight into my eyes. That look was like a sword going through me, and I remember thinking, I won't do it for them, but I'll do it for you, whoever you are. So I carried the cross out of the city to Calvary, walking in the midst of the soldiers and the crowd along with those men who were doomed to die. It was a cross like this, a symbol for the cruelest of deaths, of shame, of disgrace, reserved for the worst of the criminals. All the way as we went, I wondered about the man who had been carrying it. That look in his eyes told me he was no criminal. That look in his eyes told me he was innocent of any crimes. Well, you know what they did to him that day on the cross? I could not rest after that until I found out more about him. Now I know who Jesus of Nazareth was and who he is. I thought I was doing something for him that day, but it turns out that he was doing something for me. He was doing something for all of us. He was suffering on this cross and dying for, on it, for me and for us. When I understood that, it made a disciple out of me. He died, Jesus died too, too that day, a day that changed the world, a day that I can never look at a cross and see it any other way, the day that Jesus died for you and for me. So there it is, the cross. It really doesn't look like much, but it's what it makes you think of.
the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever.